Today is March 31st. In 1492, which is a year of association with huge events, there took place an event on March 31st, 1492, that still reverberates down to today. No, it was not. Columbus discovering the new world, nor was it even him leaving on his voyage. That was still several months away. In fact, on March 31st, 1492, an event happened in Spain where King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, who you're well familiar with, I'm sure, or should be, gathered and issued decree. The decree is known as the Alhambra Decree, and it was at that time the latest in a long series of events that had been occurring throughout Europe for 200 years. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the expulsion of Jews from various areas of Europe. For example, London, England, 1290, they expelled their Jews to France. Same with Wales. In Germany, they expelled their Jews both to Poland, or more precisely what was then known as the Pale, eventually become Poland and Ukraine. 1348, they did it again in 1510, 1551. Austria in 1421. Hungary, 1349, 1360. Italy, the Papal States so forth and so on. You get the idea. But it was 1492, in fact, March 31st, 1492, when Isabel and Ferdinand issued the Alhambra degree, decree, which expelled the Jews permanently from Spain. Now, a lot had been going on here, and you need to understand that it wasn't just a, hey, we're, we're throwing the Jews out today. This had been going on for almost 200 years in Spain. Since the Reconquista, Conquista, of Spain, since the Christians retook Spain from the, from the Muslims, they had required initially Jews to, much like they had been in the Arab world, to be submissive or whatever, but they recognized that there was value. And because, you know, Jews control all the money, uh, there were a significant number of Jews that were in service and money lending and that sort of thing. And so economically, there was some benefit to it. Um, but along the way, they decided to force Jewish folks to convert to Christendom. And so uh, in the early 1300s and in, in the late 1300s, 1391, in fact, the, the Spanish began forcing Jews to convert to Christianity upon pain of death or expulsion. And for 100 years, they forced Jews to convert. And this seemed like, <laughs> seemed like their solution. The problem was they started realizing that some of these Jews that said they converted were not being really honest about it. They, they're just saying they converted. They didn't really become Christians. And the problem is, is that those people are influencing the people who haven't converted yet. What, does this sound like a government problem to you? Some people got vaccinations, but for some reason they're not, they're not being quite upfront about things and they're, they're, not conv and they're trying to convince you know, people that didn't get vaccinated. It sounds like the same problems that government's had 500 years, huh? At any rate, they began to struggle with this because they actually believed that Jews were not just killing babies for Passover, but uh, they weren't really converting to Christian to Christianity. And of course, this is not really a Christian. Well, then you're a heretic and we can burn you at the stake, which is, of course, what was going on with Torquemada and the Spanish Inquisition. And so 
pressure came to Ferdinand and Isabella to solve this problem, this perceived problem that the Jews weren't being honest again. They're not really converting to Christianity, and so we should get rid of them. At that point in history, of course, the industrial murder of millions of people hadn't really occurred as an idea yet, but the idea of expelling people was fairly common, as we'd already seen. March 31st in 1492, Ferdinand and Isabella issued what would become known as the Alhambra Decree, which ordered all Jews to immediately leave Spain. And of course, all their money, property, everything was forfeited to the king, queen, which they then used to, in essence, fund Columbus's voyage to the New, new World. It was captured in a very famous uh, painting. As many of you know, I'm something of an art guy. I, I do like particularly Impressionist paintings. I love historical paintings, even when they're of what one might call a painful moment. And this is one of the more painful, this is one of the most famous paintings of the, uh, the, the, the Alhambra, do, uh, exp, the Alhambra decree. Sorry, my brain is moving fast. Not enough coffee today. In this painting, there are various elements of it. We're not going to go through all of them, but of course you see King and Queen Isabella. They are portrayed sitting on their throne and you need to keep something in mind about these two. They are perceived as equals. This is not a king with his queen who, um, you know, serves his purposes or like Queen Elizabeth with her, her consort. They are seen as equals in ruling Spain. But you'll notice something in this painting. King Ferdinand has his eyes open. He's watching intently what's happening. The Queen Isabella has her eyes closed. Somewhat metaphorically, she understands that What's happening in front of her is consequential, but she's trying to just ignore it, I think. In the painting, you'll see a man, his name uh, escapes me at the moment. I believe it's Jonathan, but don't quote me on that, uh, who is a Jewish man. You can see that he has a yarmulke on, and he is pleading before Isabella and Ferdinand. He is a well-known and very wealthy man. And he has come before Queen Isabella and Ferdinand to beg for the Jews to be able to remain in Spain. And as a part of this, he has contrived and, and raised funds to make a very significant gift to the king and queen. One might say a bribe to allow them to stay in Spain. There's a part of me that understands this. There's a part of me that looks at this and goes, yeah, this, it makes sense. I mean, we're pleading for the Jewish life. But there's a part of me that's infuriated by this because really, you don't want us here. Why the hell would we stay? As Tevye would say later on about Anatovka, it's, it's, it's just a place. It's not, not what we're about. But he did make this plea. What's really going on, though, in this painting is... The, the artist, and I'm not going to get into all that, but the artist has placed in this painting the man who was there to counter the argument. That is Torquemada, Tor Torquemada, the leader of the Spanish Inquisition. He is the man who is most associated with this. If you've watched Monty, uh, the, the history of the world or Monty Python, you know what we're talking about here. Torquemada is, in my view, one of the most evil people in all of history, but he is a cleric. He is a Christian cleric. And if you look closely at the painting, he is facing away. He has turned his back to Ferdinand and Isabella. He has turned his back to the king and queen who have made him the leader of the Inquisition. His right hand is pointing upwards, and we'll get to that in a second, but his left hand, he is throwing a crucifix onto the table in front of them. And it is said to us that what he essentially did was liken the bribe that Jonathan was trying to make to the 30 pieces of silver for which Jesus had been sold. And he is explaining 
vehemently, angrily, passionately to King and Queen Isabella that if they allow the Jews to stay in Spain, that their actions will be no different than those of Judas, who betrayed his Lord for 30 pieces of silver. With his right hand, he is pointing up to the very top of the painting, which is probably stylized, but it is true that the Spanish crown's motto was Tanto Manta, which loosely translates as they are the same. And what he is, the, the motto really applies to Ferdinand and Isabella. They are the same, Tanto Manto. But what he is saying is, the, you allowing the Jews, if you accept this bribe, if you accept this money and allow the Jews to stay, you are the same as, as, as Judas was. Of course, as we know, the edict was issued. Orkamata got his way. The Jews were stripped of all their possessions, forced out of Spain, and history would take its course. That money would then be used to, as I said, fund Columbus's trip to the New World. And ultimately, it's history, folks. I mean, I, I know that over the past few years, especially, this reevaluation of Columbus has taken place. I personally still see Columbus as the admiral of the, of the sea. He's, he's, a, he's a mariner, as Samuel Elliott Morrison put it in his book. He is someone who went on an adventure that should be at the top of, of adventure stories in our history. But somehow or another, we've reevaluated that because, you know, he, he brought disease and illness and slavery and blah, 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 all these things that he probably didn't actually do. But there are those who want to believe that he did, and they want to put him in that context. I personally don't put him in that context, even though his trip is funded by the Alhambra decree for all practical purposes. And this expulsion of the Jews, this once again, this pogrom, this once again, sort of Holocaust. It's not a Holocaust. Hundreds of thousands of Jews died, by the way. But it's not on the level of what will be done in the 20th century. And I get that. But even though that happens, I mean, it's history, folks. I mean, I wouldn't be here if Columbus hadn't done that, right? Or would I have been? I, I, I still also believe that if Columbus hadn't done it, somebody else would have. So it's, it's kind of that argument. But this whole concept that Torquemada is putting out there, that if you accept this bribe, if you allow the Jews to stay in Spain, it's just like Judas, is... Once again, someone blaming the Jews for perceived social problems or political problems, which was, look, Torquemada's interest was in converting people to his version of Christianity. And, and again, I'm not going to sit here and go through, the, go through the issues with the Inquisition. You don't need me to do that. But if, if that's the version of Christianity which you believe in, um, allow me to just, you know, I'll opine for a moment, you're an idiot. But at the same time, at the time, that was the prevailing view of Christianity. Now, I know what you're saying to me, Dave. It's some good history, March 31st. Maybe I didn't know about the Alhambra degree. Maybe I didn't know about that money being used for Clemson. Maybe I didn't know about Torquemada. It's history, Dave. It's ancient history. <laughs> I wish it was. I wish it was ancient history. I wish it was, I wish it was history that had taught us something as a human race, and we would have gone, well, that's really stupid. Why would we do that? What, why would we treat people like that, particularly people who our own faith tells us we shouldn't do that, right? You don't have to look very far. And even if you wanted to argue that the Holocaust was 85 years ago, Dave, we've learned from that. Not sure that we have. In recent days, a woman by the name of Lori Logan, who used to be on Fox News, used to be on CBS News. Um, I, I, I got to be honest with you, I probably have seen her, but I wasn't familiar with her work. Went on a podcast and explained to the world to hear 
that evolutionarism, Charles Darwin, was not Jewish. But did you know, this? you can listen to her say this yourself, did you know that Charles Darwin was paid by a Jew to come up with this outrageous theory of evolution? And that the reason we have so many social crises today, there's so much conflict between science and faith, is because of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, which was funded by the Jew, the Jews, the Rothschilds. You might say to yourself, Dave, there's, there's no way in hell anybody would believe that. No way in hell anybody would say that in the 21st century, a quarter of the way through the 21st century. But it happened. The Alhambra degree was more than 500 years ago. But the anti-Semitism that it represented, believe me, is just as alive and well today as it was then. As much as Torquemada was willing to blame the Jews for the fact that conversions weren't going the way he wanted them to go, Laurie Logan was basically willing to be Laurie from Alhambra and continue it on. That's not even the worst of it, I don't think. But I, I think the worst of it to me, and I say this person Jew is the insidious undercurrent of anti-Semitism, even in the conservative side of things. I have never hidden my Jewish faith from my audience. I've never, I've never hit you over the head with it. I've never said to you, because you don't believe in, in Yahweh, sorry, Hashem, as we would say, because you don't believe in the way we believe you're going to hell. I would never say that to you because it's not true. Number one. Number two, I would never wish someone to be on my path. I, I, I've said this before. There were many times where I wondered, why am I on, God, why are you, why are you making me do this this way? I don't understand. I will tell you that in recent days that has changed. I've begun to understand things better. And I'm happy about that. But I would never turn around to say to you, you're wrong. In fact, I'll tell you what I found, which is that the more I learn, the more Torah study I do, the more in depth I get into things, the more I find that the two belief systems really aren't that far apart. There's really only one primary difference in, in the big scheme of things. I know there's a lot of other little things, but but reality is, I think, like most things, there's more that draw us together and push us apart. But that has not been the case through history. Throughout history, we've seen time and time again where anti-Semitic beliefs, anti-Semitic tropes, anti-Semitic myths have fed a hatred that has resulted in the deaths of millions of people. Whether you're talking about the Alhambra degree of March 31st, 1492, or the Holocaust. Whether you're talking about the pogroms in Russia and Ukraine in the, in the early 1900s, whether you're talking about, it doesn't matter. The, the Clifford Tower in England. The underlying hatred, the underlying Torquemada-esque hatred is still there. Last week, I was listening to another show. You can guess what it is, but it was. Which a caller to that show explained to the host of that show that the insidious monsters who control the media, all media, he said, are the reason we're having all these societal problems. And he listed all the problems that he thinks were caused by these insidious monsters who are undercutting society and causing all of these problems. And the host was a little taken aback by that. To his credit, tried to tried to say, "What are you talking about? What are you what are you saying?" And this caller to the show actually said, "They're the same people that wrote the Bible." Now. 
if that's not Torquemada esque, I don't I don't know what is because the Bible certainly on the Christian side can, was you know I mean it was kind of written by Jews I guess Christian Jews I I I don't really understand his logic. But the host said to him, wait, the monsters that are controlling the media wrote the Bible? Do you know what his response was? The Jews. If you think that the hatred that drove the Alhambra degree, decree 500 years ago has diminished in any way, shape, or form, it hasn't. And it's up to us to be alert. It's us to us to be willing to speak out, to educate, to inform, to enlighten, to make sure that the Torquemadas of the world are reminded loving God is about loving your fellow man. This is the greatest commandment. Love your God as you love yourself. Can't do that. I don't really care what faith you claim. You're lying. And if you think the Jews are the responsibility, the, the cause of all your problems, quote the show host as he angrily hung up on the collar, you're a moron. <laughs> <laughs>